In the last section, we spent some time putting together the boilerplate just to get our application started. We created our main window and then did the same old process of loading a particular URL for that browser window to look at. Let's now figure out how we're going to run this application and get, to, get it to display on our screen. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time on this because the process of running this application is going to be slightly different than what we've been doing in the past, and let me tell you why. So we're going to look at this architecture diagram one more time. Remember that we are starting up our Electron application. That's going to create this main window, or browser window, which will load up an index.html document, which then pulls in the React side of the application. Now, the React side of the application is being built for us by Webpack. Remember that you don't really need to know exactly what's going on with React and Webpack here, so I hope that I'm not really confusing you too much if you're not familiar with them. But suffice it to say, what I'm really trying to say here is that we're going to have a separate process running on our machine that is building the React side of our application. So this time around, when we want to run our Electron app, we're going to not only start up the Electron running process, but we're also going to have to start up this running Webpack server as well. In practice, it's really not the worst thing in the world. I'm going to open up one terminal window. So here's the one. And I'm going to run the command npm run electron to start up the electron side of our application. And so when I do, yep, looks like we get the electron browser window appearing on the screen. Now to get the actual content or the actual React side of this application to also show up inside this window as well, I'm going to open up a second terminal window I'm going to make sure I'm still in the same directory, and I am, certainly, certainly am still inside the tasky directory right here, and then I will run npm run start. npm run start is going to start up the webpack dev server process, which is responsible for building the React side of this application. It's going to take just a moment for the project to build, and then after it's done, I can flip back over to my Electron window and press Command R to reload the index.html document inside of it. And then, ta-da, I see my application appear on the screen. So you'll notice that there's a lot of logic already in here. So I can look at my active task. I can see a list of all tasks I have. I can select a task that I want to work on. So let's say I'm going to work on the task called another app right here. And I can go back to my active task and start this timer up. So clearly, yes, there is a lot of logic already inside of this application. Again, I wanted to give you a really good example where we get some running code base or some running React application, and we have to kind of web or we have to kind of electronify, so to speak, the application. All right, let's continue working on our LAP application. So it's clear that we can at least get something to appear on the screen quite easily, but we still have a lot of work to do. The first thing I want to consider is to just look at the overall size of this window. If we look back at our mockup, so here we are right here, we've been saying that this window should appear as a tiny little window up at the right hand side of our application. But looking at what we have right now, by default this window appears just gigantic, it's very large. So we need to figure out a way to get the window to appear as something maybe a little bit more nicely sized, like maybe something like that right there, when the application first boots up. Now we did this in the last application. Remember we passed along some options object to our browser window when it was created inside of our index.js file. And so I think that would be an appropriate approach here as well. We'll go back over to our index.js file inside of our code editor and find the browser window, <clears throat> excuse me, the browser window object. So here's the configuration object. We're going to give it a set height and a width. So I think a height of around 500 pixels would be appropriate, and maybe a width of around 300. OK, let's give this a shot and see how it looks now. I'll go back to my terminal, and I'm going to restart the running Electron process. Throughout the rest of the section, I should not have to ever really be restarting the Webpack dev server over here. So I'm really just going to leave this process running. It just needs to be running. I don't really need to ever restart it. But we will be stopping and restarting the Electron side of the application several times. So I'll stop the running Electron process, start it back up. 
And now when the application appears, yeah, this is much more reasonably sized. I could definitely imagine this appearing on the top right hand side of my screen and you know, just giving me a little bit of a more compact view of the running task. So that's definitely a good step. Now the next thing I wanna think about is the top bar on, side, on this thing. You can see that I've got the little clicky buttons up here and the application's name at the very top. When I personally think about little windows or timer tray applications, I usually imagine that they're very tightly coupled with the icon at the top. And so I kind of feel like showing the taskbar on this thing is maybe not the best approach on the world. Maybe we don't want to show the taskbar or the little status bar at the top of this window. So to get that little status bar to go away, we can pass on an additional option called frame. If we say frame should be false, then when the browser window is created, we won't see that status bar appear at the top. So let's restart Electron again and see how this is doing. I'll close the running process. Start NPM run Electron again. And okay, so that looks a little bit better. You'll notice that now I can't move the window around at all. So we'll figure out exactly how to address that in a little bit. But I would definitely say that right now, if I like clicked on some icon up here to open this window, and I saw this window appear at the top right hand side, that would definitely feel like I was going down the right path. So I definitely like this a little bit more, not showing the status bar up at the top. Now there's one last kind of weird thing here. You'll notice that if I kind of hover off on the edge of the window, I can resize the application. For some Electron apps, that might make a lot of sense. But again, for this one, eh, this really should be just a very static window that temporarily appears on the right-hand side of the screen. And so I feel like it might be a little bit weird to allow a user to resize the application to, you know, like this right here. That, that looks awfully awkward. So I kind of want to make sure that a user cannot resize the application window at all. To do so, we're going to add in one last option to our options object. We'll say resize should be false, or excuse me, resizable. My mistake. Resizable should be false. So in other words, do not allow the user to resize the application window. Now if we do our restart one more time. Okay, so now you can see that I don't really get the resize cursor right there, and I clearly cannot click and drag on that thing at all. So definitely looks like the window is now nicely locked and I can't drag it around the screen or anything like that. So it definitely has some behavior that I would really associate with a common taskbar or status bar or tray bar pop-up on the top right hand side of my screen. Okay, so in this section, we did a little bit of additional configuration on our browser window to get it behave, to behave a little bit more like how I would usually expect a little status window pop-up to behave. So this is looking pretty good. Let's continue working on this application in the next section.